Did you hear that, Suzanne? Did you hear that weird, wet clicking from deep within my tortured mind? Do you want me to ask what that was? That was the sound of me dying of boredom. And it's only 9.22. Yeah, I don't know if I'm into hearing the I hate Sundays speech again. And yet I feel you need to hear it. Because it will cement our love. Well, there's good news, husband. I have an idea for us. Oh, wait. I didn't mean I actually wanted to get up off the sofa. There is Jets vs. Patriots at four. Look. Mrs. Graham died. Your eighth grade, Mrs. Graham? Yeah. Aw, oh, that's too bad. And the memorial service is at noon. We can walk there. You really want to go? She was that important? I'm just kind of curious to see if anyone I know might come, but yeah. I owe it to her a little. She was the best. Okay. Tell you what. I'll go with you. If... It stops raining. Hello there. Hi, I'm Suzanne. I was one of the land students. Oh, great. I'm her son, John. Nice to meet you. This is my husband, Cal. Hi. Hello. Thanks for coming. A few of our students are already here. Just go right in. Looking around at a service like this one, I'm always amazed how people make such journeys to uh, come and pay their respects. People who set aside their lives and their responsibilities to come back, even if only for an hour. I didn't know Elaine myself, but already I've heard stories of her service from folks who haven't been back to Morrissey in a decade or two decades. It humbles me and it soothes me when I preside over a memorial and see the faces of those who didn't think of the miles or the hours. They thought only of a face and a voice. What I'd like to do now is to ask if anyone who hasn't spoken at the podium if you'd like to stand and simply say a few words in tribute to Elaine. It doesn't have to be anything prepared. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Hi, I'd just like to say that I was personally inspired by Elaine's volunteer work at the Morrissey Food Bank. We worked together for almost seven years. She was very inspiring. She was always a caring, warm, and loving person. She always stayed positive, never spoke negatively about anyone. And even after her illness, she never let her illness get her down. She always stayed positive. And she was a great role model for me. I'll miss her very much. Thank you. Would anyone else like to say a few words? Yes, it can be tough to compress so many feelings into a small space. Yes, I know. Go right ahead. Hi, my name is Suzanne. I had eighth grade French with Mrs. Graham. Well, I guess I should call Elaine, but old habits make it a little tough. Um, I was in pretty bad shape in eighth grade, and I have to credit her with being that calming voice I needed at that time. I remember vividly having a little trouble with the work and hearing my mother call up the stairs that Mrs. Graham was on the phone. And she talked to me for a half hour about an assignment, just wanting to make sure I was doing okay with it. But then we just started talking about life, you know? And I swear we did that for another half hour before I had to go. And after that, there was just this warmth I felt from her, just as a good teacher concerned for a C student who was obviously going through a lot of emotional issues. So that'll be my memory of Elaine, and I know I'll grow old with it. Thank you. Thanks for coming. That was lovely, what you said. Oh, absolutely. 
Nice service, very nice. Would you both like to come to the memorial luncheon? We're going right there, to Ramparts on Main Street. We have room. Some of the distant family has to go back, and some just couldn't make it. It's not a big gathering, just 30 or so. Oh, well... Sure, that'd be great. Terrific. You know how to get there? I'm pretty sure. We'll head right over. Here, they have an actual coat room here. Give me that. You mad that I obligated us? No, don't worry about it. Sorry, I'm hungry and I heard even bad stuff here is good. It's cool. I guess that's where we go, in the back room? Go grab us a seat away from that one ant, the red-haired one. I think she's insane. I'm on it. Sorry. It's been a long time and I try to remember the service and the nice things that were said, not anything else. I understand, believe me. But for my own memory, do you mind if we kind of review some little details? What's the point? More for my own peace of mind, I suppose. Tell you what, I really just feel like letting it go. All right. Hello? Hi, uh, Diane Fora? This is not a sales call, sorry. Uh, my name is Calvin Essex. I've been leaving messages. Um, trying to get some information about what happened at the memorial service uh, in 2013 for Elaine Graham. I don't know any Elaine Graham. Uh, no, actually... I don't know if you remember, but you actually spoke at the service. You, do you remember you, you got up and you said some nice things about her uh, charity work? Don't call me again. Hi. Hi. What are you doing here? I just wanted to get your opinion on something. Can I come in? Sure. Is David around today? He's in Boston, a, a business thing. Place looks good. What'd you two do for your anniversary? Went up to Provincetown, nothing crazy. I'm sorry, I, I meant to respond to that email about your mother's surgery. No, that's fine. I was thinking more about the... Memorial luncheon. On that, I don't know if I have much of an opinion. I tracked down the last couple of names I wanted to call. I dead-ended. And why did it take you so long to find them? Because the relatives didn't want you to, right? That doesn't tell you to stop. Don't worry. There's no one left to talk to now. No one appropriate, anyway. Yeah, but... You kept redefining who was appropriate, didn't you? I was hoping, since we haven't talked about it for a while, that you'd remembered something more about Mrs. Graham. I didn't. So why do you think it is I'm the only one who can't let this go? Cal, bizarre things happen every day. Did you see that story about the kid who got drunk and drove off the road and killed his sister jogging? Oh, come on. It's not in the same category. 
Mrs. Graham was a sweet lady and a good teacher, and that's all there is to the story. The rest is something you should just pack down below your consciousness with all the other useless junk we collect that hurts to think about. I think about your face when it happened. Your expression, the total horror. Was it really that way? Or do you just remember it that way? It was seven seconds. I have something here. This is the reason I started all over again, chasing this. I was cleaning out my old laptop a couple of months ago, and I realized that the old backup histories of my phone were on there. There was a huge file backed up from the voice recorder app on that day. I'd been recording somehow, since the midpoint of the actual memorial service, and it didn't stop until an hour after the luncheon. Unintentionally? There's no reason I would have been recording the service. And if I had been, there's no reason for me to have arbitrarily stopped. So you got that moment? Yes, I did. You want me to play it for you? <sighs> Why? To remind you that what happened is... God, it's, it's beyond the imagination. That's exactly why you should let it go. You need to be as smart as everyone else there was. They're right to tell you off. I don't want you coming around here with this anymore. I never thought you'd be one of the frightened ones. They're all such children. Scared of the thump under the bed. So scared of the thump under the bed. that They won't make the slightest effort to open their minds to something immense. I never thought that would be you too. Well, congratulations, all of you. You've left me with nowhere to go. Yeah, we tried to get tickets for Friday night, but even the 10 o'clock showing was sold out. Didn't think it was... Hello? Hello. I is this Calvin Essex? Yeah. My name is Jillian West. You don't know me, but I have information about Elaine Graham. Uh, okay. It's really late. Can I ask you, are you related to her? No, but I, I know you've been looking for information about her. I saw a post you put up online. How did you know it was me? I'm a pretty good researcher myself. Would you like to come talk about her? Uh, I don't know. Is there something I need to know? I haven't really pursued this for two years now. You'll want to hear this. I was one of the servers at the restaurant when the dishes started flying and the tables started moving. The server? I already talked to um, Helen. She was the one in the dining room at the time. I was in the kitchen. I saw things. And then I got curious myself. I'm in Eastham if you want to talk, where Mrs. Graham is buried. Now? It's been six years now since the luncheon. I'm trying to get off this. You won't want to when we talk. Hello. Hi. Jillian? Yes. Come in. You didn't mention how the dirt road splits. I was about to turn around. I got so bumpy. Sorry. I like to be away from people. Come into the living room. I made you some tea. It's good. It's got herbs for protection. 
What kind of protection? From wind spirits, stone spirits. Ah. It's really dark. Can we have some more light? Okay. Is that good? Better. Here, let me pour. It tastes like raspberry. That's the buckthorn root. Thanks. I'm sure you understand. I looked you up online. Your name sounded familiar. And I came across the facts of your trial. I don't know if I want to ask the questions I have. First, I should tell you, I'm a practicing witch. I obey the threefold law. All right. I can tell you right now that there is nothing about Mrs. Graham that would have caused her spirit to lash out like that at the restaurant. From what I found, she's just like people say, a sweet old lady. So, where does that leave us? What do you know about other verified incidents like that one? There haven't been any that I completely believe that could have all been exaggerated or faked. The Lock Allen incident, the Amtrak 109 tape, you've seen the video of those, I assume? Of course. Even those have their doubters, this... This is the only one I believe because I was there. I still remember looking out the window just before it happened. I was looking at some people across the street closing up their yard sale. Someone was talking about a movie they'd just seen. I felt that table shake. I saw Diane Fora hit in the eye with a fork that flew up into her face. My ex-wife was hit in the throat with a plate. The clock behind the person I was sitting next to fell off the wall and some force kicked it right out of the room. Fifteen feet. Do you know what a cleaver is? Do you mean the knife? The kitchen tool? No. The pathways between our world and the world of the dead aren't only for those who've just died. They can be entered by those who weren't originally willing to go, but exit to the other side is denied to them if they possess true evil. They can latch on to a pure soul and travel with it through those halls in hopes of reaching a better destination. But when they come up against the light and realize they can't get through, while the pure soul can, they become angry, savage, and they're flung back, waiting centuries for another chance to sense another pulse in the darkness. What are you saying? It wasn't sweet old Mrs. Graham that caused that chaos. It was a cleaver. Do you know anything about it? Only that it was someone long dead. Probably a distant relative. I looked into her family history. Eight generations ago, there was a man named Harold L. Graham. He's buried in Provincetown. Tried for murder. He went free. Where is this cleaver belief coming from? I'm going to prove it to you tonight. Let's visit her grave. Why? It's written there on the back of her headstone. Not in a way anyone can see, but I can. I'll show you. We'll go the back way so we won't be seen. All right. Hey, can you slow down?
Why are we stopped? Listen. I don't hear anything. Sometimes Joro Gumo calls out right around this spot. The moon creates a pool in the clearing when it's clear. But she would never hurt me. Are you afraid? Who is that? Who's Joro Gumo? Let's go. Jillian! Where'd you go? I lost you entirely. Didn't you hear me calling out? Here we are. Come on. This is not her grave. This is not that Elaine Graham. That's not true. I know it. Our Elaine Graham is buried all the way on the other side of the hill. See, her husband wasn't Charles. It was Kenneth. There's something you don't know. Wait here. And I waited. And I waited for her to come back. And I eventually walked to Elaine Graham's real grave. And I looked at the headstone. Nothing different about it. And an hour later, I knocked on the woman's door, this Jillian, and she didn't answer. I went in and I went through the house, calling her name. She was inside her bedroom. She was lying there, face up. She had rubber tubing around her arm. She was completely unconscious. She was naked. I left her there. I felt so hateful. And you never heard from her again? No. I wouldn't want to make an assessment on her, but... She was psychotic. Huh. I suppose it can't really hurt you now to think that... Do you finally feel... Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Purified? Yes. Yesterday I... Finally deleted the recording. And I called Suzanne and I confessed to her that I had staged it. Sometime after our divorce. It wasn't real. And I told her I'd only done it because I was trying to recreate the moment before people stopped believing it had ever even happened. But she knew the truth. She knew I was just so desperate for life to be more than what we see that I became corrupt. The recording is gone, and I never want to think about any of it, or talk about any of it, again. Mm, that's good. I want you to mark that down as another success. <laughs> I wish just once 
you'd break the therapist role and talk to me about it as a tortured cynic like me. Okay, here's the thing. Even if you had gotten an explanation, like a supernatural explanation, and you suddenly knew it in your heart, without a shadow of a doubt, that a ghost had really caused that incident to happen, where would you be? How could you live your life any differently? Knowing that there's a life after death, or that there are ghosts, without knowing even more, like whether they're good or malevolent, or they're happy or tortured, and why? I ask you, when it comes to how we live day to day, so what? Excuse me. Are you Calvin Essex? Yes. Do I know you? Oh, wait, I... I doubt you do. You haven't seen me for 32 years. My name is Joseph Walls. I was a priest. I presided over a memorial service you attended. I've been looking for you a long time. Why? Ever since I heard what happened at the luncheon afterwards, I've been curious. I've been asking questions, doing research. And now, I know things. I know why it happened. This is my phone number. Goodbye. 